You know, I really believe that the gi is more technical, um, you know, because of the grips and the game and everything, and there's so much more uh, that can be done, but at the same time, you know, uh, no gi, you know, is, is also a very technical game uh, as well. Uh, you, you know, sometimes I say, you know, with the amount of more things that is uh, in the gi that you have to worry about, you know, sometimes no gi, uh, you have to be, like, almost more precise with some of those things as well, so I really like both. <laughs> I'm a no-gi uh, kind of player right now. Uh, it's you know I've gone back and forth through my career. Uh, you know, starting out in wrestling, I you know really kind of preferred the no-gi, and then I really got to where I like the gi, and then I've kind of gone back and forth a couple times. But you know where I'm, where I'm at right now, I'm a no-gi fighter. <laughs> I'm also a top player. Uh, you know, I started wrestling when I was really young. Um, you know, so I'm, you know, usually getting the takedowns and uh, playing on top. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely would look at myself as a top player. You know, it's hard to say one way or the other whether there should or shouldn't be. Um, I think it'd be very interesting if there was. Uh, you know, uh, maybe the results might be different if there was. But I'm also not one of those people like, you know, it's not something I dwell on about or, you know, go on about like, you know, I think there should be steroid testing or I think there shouldn't be steroid testing. Uh, I'm going to worry more about me and, uh, you know, uh, you know, not really worry about what everyone else is doing and take my best game against whatever they've got. And we're going to see who comes out on top. So it doesn't really bother me one way or the other. <laughs> You know, I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, I really like that. I think it's uh, very good for uh, jiu-jitsu that, you know, a lot of the, you know, uh, guys can be able to go and train with different people of other teams. Uh, I think it would be really helpful as far as the evolution of jiu-jitsu because uh, sometimes you run into this, you know, I don't know if I should go to that school or I don't know if I should go, you know, to that school because of where I train or this or that or whatnot. You know, there's always going to be some of that, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, uh, my favorite submission has got to be, well, I don't really have one favorite, but I, I really like chokes. Um, you know, guillotine chokes, anaconda chokes, back chokes, and I really like calf slicers. You know, uh, I spend quite a bit of time uh, drilling, um, you know, in class and everything when I'm, uh, uh, when I'm a student, when I'm not teaching classes. Um, and I also spend probably more and majority of my time rolling, uh, but it probably comes down to about, you know, 60-40 between uh, rolling and, and actual drilling. You know, I think I got to go with uh, Hajer, Salo, and Shanji. Oh man, that's a that's a difficult question. You know, uh, especially having competed, you know, um, you know, many uh, times uh, against bigger opponents. You know. I think probably some of the some of the top guys that have ever competed or rolled with, uh, you know, got to be in competition. Probably you know Rafael Mendez and Cobrinha, and then you know drilling, rolling, training with that, uh, you know, Master Rafael Lovato Jr., uh, Masalo, Shanji, all those guys. You know, it's hard to say really. You know, is it good? Is it bad? You know, it it, it is what it is, and. You know, it, it's kind of what it's being used for. If it, you know, uh, you know, if you're able to use the 50-50 and get what you need out of it, and you know, come on top and keep the game going and get out of it, uh, you know, then I think it's fine, no problem. You know, uh, it's an evolution of the sport. Um, you know, it's guys using the rules the way they are. Um, you know, but at the same time, like perhaps the rules maybe need to be changed because you see a lot of, you know, um, stalemated, you know, kind of positions and, you know, maybe sometimes the other person doesn't even want to be there, uh, yet because the other person does, uh, you know, they can be held there for quite some time and, and it kind of does become a stalemate position. So as far as the sport is concerned, uh, you know, some rule changes to that could definitely be, uh, maybe really improve uh, whether it's good or whether it's bad or this or that. And then I also believe that, you know, as far as, uh, you know, uh, most everyone, you know, 
seeing these people play this kind of game and everything, I still believe that it's important that uh, those that play it, that you know, that uh, when, when they teach their students, that you know, they still be sure to teach them, you know, all the basics, you know, of, of jujitsu and, and the self-defense part as well, especially when they're starting. They move on, you know, they get to that purple, brown, black belt level. You know, okay, we understand this, but you know, you see white belts doing some, you know, real crazy stuff out there, you know, nowadays, and it's just like, you know, I mean. You know, they, they ought to be learning maybe a little bit more basic before they jump into all of that. You know, I get asked that a lot, uh, the knee reaping thing as far as competition is concerned. Um, with the gi and because of, you know, um, the, the wearing the gi and how that can be difficult to get out of some things sometimes, I think that, you know, with the gi, um, I'm all for, you know, still staying illegal or whatnot, but as far as like no gi competitions, especially at that highest level, um, I don't, I don't have a problem with them at all. I think they're just fine. You know, uh, a lot of people that I've, you know, never trained with, uh, you know, I've not had the chance really to go travel around a whole lot right now. I've still, uh, I just completed, uh, I got my master's degree. Um, so I was happy about that. And, you know, hopefully uh, coming up soon, I'll be able to do a lot more traveling. But, you know, there are a lot of guys out there, you know, that I've never actually like, you know, trained with or gone to their school before. Uh, you know, I know Cobrinha has a school now. It'd be cool to go out there and train with him sometime. Uh, you know, Marcelo Garcia, you know, a lot of those kind of guys uh, as well. <laughs> Yeah, you know, a lot of the guys, a lot of them I've competed against already, but you know, I always like uh, testing myself at that highest level. Guys like Rafael Mendez and Cobrinha, uh, definitely guys I'd love to fight again. Um, there are some other names out there. Um, you know, I've actually competed against Bruno Frazada once. He'd be another guy I'd love to fight again. Um, you know, so yeah, a lot of those, a lot of those real top tier guys, those are guys that you have to uh, fight over and over and over again uh, if you want to be at that level as well. Yeah, you know, I'd like to thank uh, all my sponsors uh, on the mat, Lucky Gee, 1914 um, Martial Arts Recovery, uh, Tyrese Training out there at Oklahoma Strength. Um, you can, guys, you can follow me um, as well at uh, Darth Raider 86 on Facebook and then at Darth Raider 86 on Twitter. Um, look me up and you can follow me there. Uh, a lot of my training and everything gets posted there. So, uh, yeah, you can follow me there. <laughs> Thank you.